up on top here. Oh, come on, come on, get off the phone there. Yeah. Got it. Wait a minute, I gotta get up the top. There he goes. Oop, there we go. Yeah. There it's you me. go. It's you. It's you. We had a big, long conversation here before you before you got on. It's with smart. Michael. He's a good man to know. I know. An I found out about him. An interesting man to know. Yeah. 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 I guess we all are, though, right? Some of us. <laughs> Mike, how's things out in Texas? Cold? Yeah, yeah we're, we're fixing to drop pretty good. It was yeah. about 80 last week, and I think tomorrow night will be about 10. Yeah, it's going to be. It's going to be brutal all around the country. We're not going to have a lot of the guys from the Midwest. I got I heard from uh, Linda. She's not going to be on because they switched their choir rehearsal from tomorrow to today. Right. And then the Rennicks in the Kansas City, they're doing Christmas tonight. <laughs> oh, I was, a, I was <laughs> in the Kansas weather. City last week at their high. Yeah, I remember you telling us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they're going to be doing it tonight because the weather's not going to be good. So oh. let's see who we get, but that's okay. That's okay. Well, Greg is working uh, six to six now. Yeah. Hey, is it on? Uh, what the hell is? How are you, my dear? I'm well, thank you. We just finished Surpass on High with, with Sydney. Yeah. We just finished, and now we're connected to you. Was, he, inter was he interesting? Yes, he was. When do we study Jeremiah? The Jeremiah. Book of Jeremiah. Yes, and we're, we're up to chapter 18. It's a, it's a very interesting prophet. Very, in, oh, very interesting, my very word. Interesting prophet, yeah. yeah. Troublemaker. So, yep. <laughs> yes. A good troublemaker. Oh. <laughs> Come on, dear. <Jerry. laughs> he, he was a good trouble. He, he caused a lot of trouble for the king and... Uh, he told it like it was. Jeremiah is a a good prophet. A very good prophet. A yeah. weeping prophet, I think, was he? Mm -hmm. Is that what they say? He was a weeping prophet. Yeah. How is Zipazan? Zipazan's well. Yes, he's well. Good. Good. He's well. I need to connect with him. Hi, Masha. Oh, Masha's on. Good. She didn't good. know she was going to make it or not. Oh, she's got to unmute. We you're can't hear her. Marsha, you're on mute, dear. Yeah, now she's muted, yeah. She's unmuted. Okay. We didn't need plan B, so I'm here. No, no plan A, B, C, huh? Plan no. A, plan A worked. Good, good yeah. to see you. It's good to see you. Thank you, it's nice Catherine to see you. Catherine is on. Hi, Kate. Hi, Dad. How are you? I know you. Okay, okay. A couple of people aren't going to make it. I'll just tell Mike and Ned because of the weather situation in the Midwest. Uh -oh. uh, choir rehearsal was changed in Detroit to tonight, and the Rennicks are going to be celebrating Christmas today because of the big snowstorm that's coming through Kansas and that area oh. later on. Yeah. So. <clears throat> But that's okay. Yeah, it's okay. We'll wait a few minutes to see who's coming. <clears throat> see, you know, for Sid Pazan's next Bible study, you should suggest to him that he join our Bible study too. Okay, I will. I will. Yeah, I'd love, to have, I'd love to have him conduct a session. Oh, okay. All right. I'll discuss. I'll talk to him about yeah, it. I, I, I should, that would be nice. Yeah. I, I, should, I should write to him and, and discuss it with him, too, and just, I would love to have him. He's oh, that would be lovely. Well, the, our next session with him will be on the, you know, hold on, we're going back. What did he say? Uh, second of my, uh, hold on. Second of February. That's when we go back with him. Oh, okay. So we've got a whole yeah. So the whole month of 
January, you can join us, yes. Is he going to be traveling, do you know? Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't know. He didn't mention anything about traveling, so I'm okay. sure. I don't know. Yeah. I'll get in touch with him. I'll give him yeah, a call. Yeah, get in touch with him. That'll be lovely. Yeah. yeah. We haven't we haven't spoken for a while. Yeah. So let's see who else we get coming up. Yeah, I'm just waiting for Laura and Lena. I wonder where they are. Maybe they're running a bit late. That's okay. Yeah, they'll come on. <clears throat> Marsha, how are you doing, Takas? Doing well, thank you, Dehai. That's good. Good to hear it. Good to hear it. I, I, go ahead. You got to do do, Marsha. Test. What? <laughs> you got to do do. <laughs> oh, it's a tired <laughs> one. <laughs> um, this was an interesting test. I bet we could use it in a Sunday school class. <laughs> my guest. Be my guest. Okay, thank you. Have you I've used this test for maybe uh, 20 years anyways. Well, but I but I try to use it at least every other year with the same group just to see if they remember <laughs> some of the things on there. And there is our dear Laura. Hi, Tuckers, how are you? We're doing fine. Thanks, uh, Father Tatius. Yeah, it's good to see good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you. Yes, I'm glad to be here today. Thank you. Missed missed last time and I missed you all. We miss you too. We miss you too. Our our Australian connection is pretty important. Well, there's a contingent of three of us now. So let's hope for Ani to join as well. Lena just came on. Yeah, Lena. Laura, what is that icon you have behind you? Oh, it's I the um it's the hundredth anniversary, the martyrs. Oh, okay. Uh, the martyrs painting. I see. All right, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah we had it done in miniatures. Um, and nice. um, we have the large one in the church. Yeah. And so people so people could have one in their homes. Very nice, very good idea. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Hi, Lena, what do you got? Good to see you, honey. Hi, sorry. Yeah, how are you all? Good to see Good. you. Doing all Looking right. Looking forward to the quiz. It was another fun um, Good. study. Good. Had Good. me read both over and over, <laughs> both passages. Sometimes little quizzes like this open your eyes to realities. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Good revision. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's begin with our prayer. We're going to be low in numbers today but i know high in spirit um i was saying to some of the others that the weather conditions in the midwest here in the united states is causing havoc for some people so tahagab not eat too much mash i see him behind you <laughs> <laughs> he's sneaking up on you he's sneaking up on us okay if you'll put yourselves on mute we'll begin with that prayer <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. O Almighty God, who by the birth of thy holy child Jesus has given us a great light to dawn upon our darkness, grant, we pray thee, that in his light we may see light to the end of our days and bestow upon us, we beseech thee, that most excellent <clears throat> Christmas gift of charity to all men, so that the likeness of thy son may be formed in us and that we may have the ever brightening hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Okay, so you had a test to complete. So we're gonna go over the test. Um, if you want, where we're so small, unmute yourselves so that we can hear you all at any time. And do not be shy to offer your answer. Don't wait for the next guy and then see if you're right. I'm sure you all have perfect scores in this. 
<laughs> but it's it's something that you know uh, it awakens us to the reality of what is in the Bible and what is in Christmas songs and Santa Clauses and everything else that we see uh, this time of year. So <clears throat> let's begin. The first couple of ones are pretty easy. So who wants to take the first question? Anybody? Come on. Okay. The Bible does not say. Okay. Well, the first one was Joseph's family was from, right? Is that the first question? No, for no. the journey to Bethlehem. <laughs> oh, let me see. Did I get it wrong? Okay. So what's, what's the first one? For the journey to Bethlehem, Mary and Joseph walked there's multiple questions. I mean, the answers. Oh, there it is. Okay. For the journey to Bethlehem, Mary and Joseph did what? Walked. Joseph walked. Mary rode a donkey. Mary rode a cat. The, the, Bible, Bible, the, Bible, the, the Bible does not say. That's correct. Very good. Very good. Next question. Who wants it? I have to Masha, go ahead. When Mary became pregnant, Mary and Joseph were engaged. Yes. Yes. Be another betrothed, another word for being engaged. Right. And we find that in Matthew uh, chapter 2, it says, Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way when his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph. But before they lived together, she was found to be child from the Holy Spirit. Very good. Okay, next question. Who wants it? See that? We can't hear you. Is that because I'm on the Zoom, I don't have the questions in front of me. Oh, okay. The, so I can't I don't, do it. Yeah. Eddie? Do I don't have it either. You don't have it either. I haven't got it in front of me. No, I don't remember. You don't, who has it in front of them? Ready? Dev yourself do I do? Go ahead. Oh. Go ahead. Yeah. Laura, are you going? Oh, I don't mind. I'll do the next one or this one, whatever you want. Okay. Well, right, three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you go. Um, yeah, three. Um, when Mary became pregnant, I put C. Mary, uh, Mary left Nazareth for a while. Oh, I put B. Uh, um, e, E, and B. So it was C. Mary left for a while. So what did you have? When Mary became pregnant, um, I had B. Joseph wanted to dissolve their relationship. So that's B and C, C because she went to e. see Elizabeth. B that's what I put. That's oh, what e. I put. E, yeah. <laughs> B and C. B yeah. and C. That's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Sorry. Okay. Laura? Next one. Laura, you uh, want yes. to Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yes, uh, D, none of the above. Christmas has always been observed. Okay, read don't... the question. What was the question? Okay, uh, Christmas has always been observed. A, on December 25, B, on January 17, C, at Grandma's house, and D, none of the mm -hmm. above. Uh, or D. Okay. Somehow or other, my questions got all mixed up, jumbled. Uh -uh. I don't know why. Okay, so the question was, when was Jesus born? Is that right? And no. Uh, yeah, well, Christmas, Christmas has always been observed. Always been observed. Oh. Man, I'm tired. Why did this get like this? Okay. It's D, none of the above. Yeah, you're right. That's Answer right. Is. Okay. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the questions and you can tell me the answers. How's that? That's because better. Yeah. 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 yeah okay. That's gonna read. okay. So who told Joseph to name the baby Jesus? Mary, the chief priests and scribes, the angel of the Lord, or Herod the king? Who told Joseph to name the baby Jesus? Masha. 
Just speak up. Go ahead. The angel of the Lord. Yes. Because in Matthew, we read when he had contemplated this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife because the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Okay. Next, just what is a heavenly host? An angelic mm -hmm. choir? The welcoming angel in heaven, an army of angels, or none of the above. Go ahead, anyone. Yeah. Oh, army of angels. Army of angels. In Luke, it says, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, They spoke Armenian that night. I don't know if you know that or not. <laughs> How many angels spoke to the shepherd? A multitude? Two, Gabriel and Michael. C, one. Or D, who knows? C, one. C, one. C, one. 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 Then an one. angel of the Lord stood before them. Oh. The glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. Very good. What song did the angel sing? O little town of Bethlehem, joy to the world, glory to God in the highest. Hark the herald angels sing. No. Say, glory, say glory to God in the highest. Yes. Glory Thank to God in the highest. <laughs> what is know. it that, what is the song that we sing in our morning services every day? Archipatsunas. which okay. translates okay. to be. Glory to God in the highest. Do you know when else we sing this song? You won't believe it, but I'm going to tell you. We sing it at the burial service. Oh, that's right. Yeah. When we're yeah. at the when we're at the yes. cemetery and the casket is low, believe it or not, we sing glory to God in the highest. Mm -hmm. Because if you read the words carefully, you'll understand the reason. And I think in my last bulletin or the bulletin yes. maybe you mentioned that. Yep. Okay. Where did, excuse me, where did that show? Uh, what where was you? the glory to God in the highest? Where was it? I, in Luke, I didn't see Luke it. Luke chapter Luke. 2. Okay. It says, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. In Luke okay. chapter 2. I verse missed that. Okay. Okay. So, the Thank next you. question. What sign were the shepherds to look for? A star over the stable, a barn outlined with Christmas lights, a baby in the manger, or both A and C? A and C? Yeah. No, there was, this was a baby in a manger. A baby in a manger, absolutely. So the answer is C, a baby in a manger. The next question. What did the innkeeper say to Mary and Joseph? Did he say, I have a stable out back, or there's no room in the inn, both A and B, or D, the Bible does not say? There's no place in the inn. You agree with that? I yes. have none, none of the above. <laughs> Bible doesn't no say. Place. The Bible doesn't say. It doesn't say? Oh. Oh, I think. I there's, nothing, there's nothing in oh. scripture that says what the innkeeper said to them. Oh. oh. Okay. There's a, a very beautiful okay. story. Uh, and I usually try to insert it into a Christmas sermon just about every year uh, about this school, the little kids they were doing to do the Christmas play. And the, the one boy that was picked to play the innkeeper uh, really didn't have any lines to say. And he was very upset by the fact that everybody else had something to say except him. And so when the time came that uh, Mary and Joseph came and knocked on the door, uh, he opened the door and he said to them, come in, welcome. We have plenty of room for you. 
<laughs> he, he wanted to be part of the place. Every time I see this reference, I always think of that little kid. Okay, so now the baby Jesus was born in a cave, in a manger, in a barn, or who knows? Manger. In a manger. Yeah. Who knows? Show me where it says he was born in a manger. You know what a manger is? Oh. It's a a manger is a feeding trough. Feeding yeah. trough, yes. It's like oh. they put the hay in it for the cows to eat or whatnot. But where yeah. was where was he born? We don't know. We don't know. Oh. oh. Well, it was. I suppose that's a trick question because the shepherds were to look for a baby in a manger. That's so. Right. Yes. But, uh -huh. Well, they, they place him in the manger. Yeah. That's, that was that's like somewhere though. I they thought did. I read it somewhere. Don't lie. I thought I'd read that somewhere. Too. I'm going to read it out again oh. because I thought I saw manger. Oh. manger. Yeah, it is. The, the, the angel told the shepherds to look for a baby in the manger. The manger. Yes. yes. So you assume that that question relates so to remember that. Remember what, what a manger but, is. A manger is a yes. feed. Where was he born? Was he born in a stable, in a house? He wasn't born in the manger. Oh, okay. Yeah. Trick question. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what are we up to? I moved away for a minute. What number are we up to? Um, I don't have numbers on yeah. this answer sheet. 19. Oh, that's why sheet. it's all over the place, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. 19. Uh, uh, yes. We're yeah. up so to 19. The next 19. question was, what is a manger? And that's, uh, the answer is a feeding trough for animals. Um, yes. Here comes one. What animals were present at Jesus' birth? Cows, sheep, camels? Cows, sheep, and donkeys, camels, sheep, and donkeys, or D, there is no mention of animals. D. A. D. A. D. No mention D. of animals. Okay. This is a very, very intellectual question. When did baby Jesus cry? When he <laughs> saw the wise men? Probably whenever babies usually cry. <laughs> When the cattle started lowering, yeah. no crying he makes. No crying he makes. That's what I had, B, yeah. Uh, I, and I had B, when a baby usually yeah, cries. Yeah, when a baby <laughs> cries. That's so <laughs> nice. <laughs> I've done this test too often. Ah, there you go. <laughs> okay, so who saw the star over Bethlehem? Mary and Joseph, the shepherds, the wise men, or King Herod? Wise men. Wise men. The wise and men. And the ship. Oh. oh. Oh, the wise men. Hang on. Oh, yeah, the wise men. men. But what, what did I have? I, I said none, B and C. I said none of the above because it was the wise men, right? It didn't show. Wise men. Mm. Oh. Yep. Oh. But it's not in the, one of the question, uh, answers, right? Oh, because it says three kings. It's not the king. <laughs> they're wise men. They're not kings. The wise men, it says. So how many wise men came to see Jesus? One, three, twelve, or the Bible doesn't say? Doesn't say. Bible doesn't say. That's right. Yeah. Because in Matthew we read, in the time of King Herod and after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Judea wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. What were the names of the wise men? Baldassar, Caspar, and Melchior, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Asalamir, the Bible does not say. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, that's not even it. No, we no. didn't have that one. You didn't have that yeah. one? No. no. Really? Okay. No. So, so do you know the answer to that? Yes. You just a said the is, names. A so is Baldassar, Caspar, and Melchior, again? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. A salamir, or the Bible does not say. A. Uh, a. The Bible Let me say doesn't a. say. Let me say a. I said a. I thought okay. I'd heard those names. How many say B? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. No. <laughs> How many say C? A salamir. How many say D? <laughs> the Bible does not say. Yes, that's what I say. Okay. The Bible, the Bible doesn't, doesn't say. say. No. Yeah. 
It's because of the song, We Three Kings of Orieta. And they give them names, Melchior, Caspar. Oh, okay. There's no, there's nowhere in the Bible. Okay. So what in the world are magi? Are they Eastern kings, magicians, astrologers, or none of the above? Eastern, Eastern kings. kings. Oh, astrologers. 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 They what? Astrologers. Astrologers? Astrologers. Mm. So, and they're not kings, are they, dear Tatios? It says in, in Matthew chapter 2, now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Who is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star and in the east and have come to worship him. They were astrologers. Mm -hmm. They were not kings, even though the song says, We three kings <laughs> of Oriyavanya. Okay. When the wise men brought their gifts to Jesus, they found him with his parents in a manger, a house, a church, none of the above. They they no. found him in a manger, no. a house, a church, none of the above. None of the above. How many agree with that? I said B, a house. Okay. In Matthew chapter 2, verse 11, it says, on entering the house, they saw the mm. child with Mary, his mm. mother, and they knelt down mm. and paid homage to him. So they entered into oh, house. Oh, that's right. Yeah. We're gonna, I'm going to talk about that. this in a minute. Mm. What were the gifts of the wise men? Old frankincense and myrrh? We Wine didn't have that question. You didn't yeah. have that one either? Yeah. No, no. no. Because we only had 20 out of the 25 that you normally see. Okay, sent. maybe I didn't. I, all right. Oh, you're good, Laura. You remember how many there were. I've done this for the past three years. <laughs> good on you. Good memory, too. So, so yeah. do you remember what gifts the wise men brought? Yes. Yeah. Yes. What were Frankincense, they? Gold. Myrrh. Myrrh. Gold. And, and gold. gold. Okay, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Okay. Yeah. When the wise men did not return to Herod, Herod did what? Do you know? Killed the Sent the out children. a spirit to children. find them. Became furious and killed all male mm -hmm. children in Bethlehem under two. Went to see the baby Jesus himself or all of the above? Killed the babies under two. Killed. Became furious and killed all the male children in Bethlehem under two. It's... Yeah. It, it's it's one part of the Christmas narrative that is left out because after talking about the star of Bethlehem and singing nice songs and Santa Claus and the Christmas tree, who really wants to talk about all the male children under two years old were killed at the time of Jesus' yeah. birth? But that's what the Bible records. Yeah. Okay, this question. What does the word Emmanuel mean? Praise God, God with us, God is love, or all the above? Emmanuel. God with us. Ayo. God with us. In Matthew it says, Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Okay, uh, we went over this. Okay, we went over these questions. Okay, so the reason that I, I sent this questionnaire out, and apparently I sent out a questionnaire that was different from the answers that I had, and I, and I apologize for that, um, but we can see how the narrative from scripture 
um, differs a little bit from the narrative of society when we're talking about Christmas. Um, the songs that were written and have been written, such as We Three Kings of Orient are. They're no, first of all, there weren't three of them, uh, and they weren't kings. But yet, that has somehow or other become the legitimate understanding of the Christmas story. And whenever we see a manger scene set up, you know, we see this little crash type uh, house uh, stable, however, with the child lying in it, and we see the animals that are there because we figured, well, you know, it's a bar type structure, there must be animals. So we put animals there. Um, the three kings, well, the three, three wise men came to visit Jesus. But studies have shown that there's no way that the wise men, whether one, two, three, four, five, whatever it was, could have reached Bethlehem from the east where they were, probably from the area of Persia, Persian area, um, at the time of Jesus' birth. Scholars are putting the time of the visit to the, to the Christ child that may be up to two years after the birth. Um, but yet we've taken those three characters, whether there are three or not, and we put them into the scene, the major scene. We have to be careful. We have to be careful uh, so that we're not guided by you know, the Santa Claus Christmas, but what scripture tells us. Uh, it's important that we have that understanding of what Christmas really is teaching us. The timeline is important. The timeline is very important too, because, you know, because we celebrate Christmas, we'll say on December 25th, um, everything gets put into that one day. Uh, we want everything to fit comfortably, conveniently, snugly into that one day of December 25th, maybe we start on the 24th and, you know, sing Christmas cows, get that warm, smug, uh, snuggly feeling. Maybe we go to church <coughs> and there are services and we sing Christmas cows and we open up our gifts and, and so forth. And we eat our dinners and, you know, by the afternoon of December 25th, we've had it. We, we're tired. Um, doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. The the, the Christmas narrative is important for us, and, and it's important for us to understand this whole idea of the manger, um, the whole idea of us being present at, that, at the manger, um, that deep understanding of us being at the manger. We are the ones that are to come and to kneel at the manger to fully understand Christmas. And let me, let me offer this to you as well. Um, when we go to our churches uh, and we look upon the altar, and we've looked upon it every time that we enter into our church, but I challenge you to look carefully at what is there. Because if you look carefully and understand what is there at the altar and upon the altar, you will see that it, it is the manger scene being recreated for us. Why do I say this? We look at the altar and of course we see the icon, the holy picture of Mary with the young child Jesus. We see before us the son of God. We see Mary, the birth giver, Astlodzamai, Astlodzamor, uh, the birth giver of, 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 of God. Um, what was given to mankind at Christmas, we see present in that holy picture that is placed upon every Armenian altar around the world. But more so, scripture tells us about the gifts of the wise men. Um, the incense, the frankincense, is placed upon the altar as well. We burn incense during Badarak. 
uh, that incense is representative of our prayers arising up before God. It's us kneeling before the manger, offering our prayers to the God Jesus. Um, so that gift of the wise men of incense is present upon our altars. The myrrh, the holy oil, throughout the Old Testament, we see how the prophets and the kings were anointed with this holy oil. We have our holy muron, which is also placed upon the altar in the vessel that is shaped in the form of a dove, symbolic of the Holy Spirit coming down. This also is placed upon the altar, one of the gifts of the wise men. Gold. We see the gold embossed in our crosses that are placed upon the holy altar. We see other items that are embossed in the gold that is placed upon the holy altar that we use uh, during our celebration of, of, of our holy mother. So within the altars of our church, if we really look in depth at what is before us, we come before the manger every time we enter into that church. And it behooves us, as we remember that, that we come and to bow as the wise men did who came to worship Christ the child. <clears throat> we come to bow and to worship Christ the child as well. I always talked about connections. This is a connection that you can always remember every time you enter into the church, that we are connected every service, every time we enter into the church with the birth of Christ. We celebrate not only the resurrection or the crucifix, we celebrate all of this together, beginning with the birth of Christ. And that holy altar is there symbolic of that manger, that 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 stable, that, that area of worship, that place of worship, that manger, which was the crib that contained the body of Christ, that we come and we worship before that manger, that that receptacle of of Christ himself. Um, when you go to church the next time um, and, and you're not going to be so hurried and rushed whether you're singing in the choir or uh, anything else, any duties that you may have, parish council or so on and so forth um, go to the church or maybe even on the day that there are no services and just sit and contemplate what I've just talked to you about as you look upon the altar visualize internally with, the, with the, the, as we say, the eyes of your soul, that manger scene with Christ present, with his mother present, with the gifts of the frankincense, the, the mure, um, uh, the, 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 the oil, the, uh, the, 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 the muron that is there, and also uh, the gold that is there. Does it make sense? Does it make sense to you folks? Okay, good. Yeah, hi. Yes, sir. One thing I, uh, this is very interesting. And I think that this should be given to our Sunday school students somewhere along the line. Okay. Somebody should do this and put it out. You should do it. Okay. <laughs> and make sure that these people, these kids know what that all altar is. It's not just a, it's not just a house, not just a, it's something important. And this should get to them. And really, I wish I was teaching now, you know? You're always teaching, Eddie. No, I'm not teaching now. I, I wish I were. Teaching. Marsha, you should put this down. And, I'm, I'm taking notes. I can't have, even tell you how I scored on this test. It's almost amot. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but this should be something that our children should know. The real reason why we're there. 
and you know, it's 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 not it's it's not given to them. We're not doing it. Well, not only to the kids but adults as well. Yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah, uh, adults yeah. as well for everyone. I mean, and 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 I have to tell you that you know, um, I was I was preparing a sermon uh, for Christmas Eve. Uh, and and for some reason, uh, I was I, I was looking at different sources and whatnot, and I came across a a, a passage uh, by Dietrich Bonhoeffer, and he talks about us kneeling at at the at the at the manger or whatnot. Um, and it got me thinking, and and the gifts of the wise men and so forth. And I I myself realized that. These are placed upon the altar. These are this this altar is not just simply where we offer the sacrifice of holy batarak, but is also the place of the birth of Christ as the manger scene. Um, and it just I started doing a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. The, you know, I I created you know this this scenario in my mind and. I said, let me write a few of these things down, which I did, but um, that was the intent of it. And so I said, tonight, while well, we're going to be talking about it, um, and, and especially the gifts of the wise men, because sometimes they're minimized. We, we really don't pay attention to the real understanding of it. No, we don't. Um, as I said, not only it was the myrrh, uh, the oil used to anoint kings and prophets, but it was also symbolic of death. Of the death of Jesus, because remember at his death, when the uh, women went to the tomb, why did they go to the tomb? To anoint his body. Yeah. What? What? Do you know what we call those women in irony and how we refer to them? Anyone know the word? It's yulha peritz, oh. oil bearing women. Oh. Those who are bringing the oil, those who are bringing the uh, anointing oil, the mirror, they're bringing it to anoint the, the body of Christ. And during the morning service, the hour of the morning service, there is a service within the morning service uh, called the Yurha Peritz that is dedicated simply to the women coming to the tomb to anoint the body of Christ. We do special readings from the four gospels that pertain to just uh, the death of Christ before the resurrection. And then we have readings that pertain just to the resurrection on those days of resurrection, the Harutian Giragi, the, the Sundays of resurrection. And those four gospels, uh, each one is read at a, on a different Sunday. There's a calendar that we go by, and we read the Yura Peritz Alvedaran, the good news of the women who were coming to anoint the body of Christ. Um, it's all connected. It's all connected. And the yeah, you mirror, do. if you remember, and if you don't, you can look in the gospel toward the end where the crucifixion happened, that <coughs> the mirror was mixed with the wine to give to Jesus. And at the time of crucifixion, mirror was sometimes mixed in with the wine to offer as a numbing solution. Uh, and at the time of Jesus's crucifixion, this was also offered to him in that gall the, that sour wine that was offered to him um it's all connected folks it's all connected you, you just have to find the connections I, you are but, the ones giving it to us <laughs> well I, I i do my best i do my I best did. i wish uh, i had it 45 years ago you, well, have <laughs> you weren't we there today any we all have today you know <laughs> we have no guarantee of anything else but today so we take care of what we have today and you know, if we if we learn something today, well, you know what? It's the same as if we learned it 45 years ago 
um, we still have learned it and it stays with us for the rest of our lives, whatever that number of days or years are gonna be. So when, when you go to church again, especially Christmas, um, make that connection. Make that connection when we sing the Christos Imech. I, I keep saying every time we sing the Christos Imech, we're singing Merry Christmas. It's a Christmas carol. Christ is with us. Christ is amongst us. Uh, Christos Imech meant hiding itself. Christ was revealed. Well, when was he revealed to us? At his birth. It's Christmas. It's Merry Christmas. Um, have that in your mind. Have that in your mind as you offer the kiss of peace to other people. I mean, you know, this whole idea of we go back and forth this way. And you know, <laughs> how do we say Merry Christmas to our family? Hey, Merry Christmas. We hug each other. We enjoy. We celebrate. During Badarak, it should be the same thing. Um, we should get out of our place and go across the aisle. Turn around to the people behind you, to the people in front of you, knock on their shoulder. Hey, hey good. Christos and Mitch. And, you know, embrace. Merry Christmas. Um, that's what we're called to do, folks. That's what we're called to do. Any questions? Not okay. Uh, I was just going to say, will you write this in your bulletin this week? Uh, About the altar, or or <laughs> is that or is that giving the sermon away? Well, I, I I don't I don't know if I'm giving them. I'm going to be in church on Christmas Eve. Um, I have and don't say anything, Eddie, to him. But I haven't been asked to give the sermon. Usually I'm asked to give the sermon on Christmas Eve, but uh, I haven't been asked this year. If I do, then I'm going to mention it. You know, I'm going to use that sermon. If I don't, be part of my file for next year. Um, but the bulletin is just about done, and it's not part of it. Uh, right. But oh, uh, it's, part we'll of your, 20... it's part of your Zoom Bible study. Okay. It'll be part of 2024, hopefully. Maybe 2023, you know, something like that. Who knows? I'll you there. Oh, 2023, of course. Yes. Yeah. yeah, don't rush things, will you, Tim? We're going to get through 2023. <laughs> oh, I'm already yeah. thinking 2023, mate. Oh. 2020, we got to get to 2023. So anyways, any questions, anything confusing on that little quiz that we took? And I'm sorry for the mix-up in the way the answers came out on the answers sheet. Um, I'll send it all to you next week or maybe even tomorrow. I'll send out the answer sheet that I have and you can compare it to the quiz. It may be out of order a little bit. I don't know how it got out of order, but I'll send it all to you so you have all the correct answers. Um, but the answers are in, as I said, in the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Luke. Uh, in the beginning of those Gospels, you'll find them all. Uh, and, you know, ask, ask some of your friends, hey, how many wise men were they? I said, oh, three. I said, yeah, show me. What were their names? Oh, well, I had one guy get mad at me because uh, the first week uh, in, in January, I usually put into my Sunday bowls as name days. He said, my name day isn't there. I said, what's your name day? He said, Caspar, one of the wise men. Really? I said, one of the wise I said, see, were you sure? That was one of the wise men, Caspar. Gaspar in Armenian. Oh, really? Yeah, show me where it says that. <laughs> so uh, it's it, the, 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 not yours. Yes. That's 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 an interesting point. Um when you Google it, is it there? Like, is it in history? Um, is it uh, is it an, an although it's not in the Bible, is it a historical fact? Nope. No, we, we're not given names at all. Not even given the number. So it was. Oh, so it's okay. So it was only in the Christmas carols then. <laughs> okay. Wise men from the East. That's it. You know, all in our songs. Who knows? I mean, you know, but, and also what's interesting, you probably, when you see the three wise men in the manger scene, one of them is black. Yes. Why is one of them black? Okay, from Africa. Said who? <laughs> now this is the logic that that I have discovered that has been used because one of the gifts was frankincense. Frankincense. And frankincense usually comes from trees that grow in Ethiopia. Yeah. 
And this was one of the gifts that was presented. They make, you know, one and one equal seven and say, well, the, the gift of frankincense was brought by a wise man from Africa who had to be black. Okay. So we get a story. You know, it's like Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer almost. I mean, you know. <laughs> okay. um, That's right. I said it's important. Remember, I told you about my uh, Old Testament professor. He used to tell us, You are stupid people. I do not care what you think. You know nothing. I want to know what is in the text. Nothing else. He was, <laughs> he was, he was uh, from Lebanon. He was the Antiochian priest. A genius when it came to the Old Testament. The scholar in his own right. And, and what he said was true. He didn't care. We were stupid people. I don't care what you think. What is in the text? What does the text say to us? That's what we're going to go by. Okay? Don't make things up. That's why it's dangerous when we find these paraphrased Bibles that are out there that are written by you know, this evangelist or that evangelist. And I'm talking about present day so-called evangelists. Uh, I don't like this saying. I don't like this word. Now nah, we shouldn't do this. Well, this is how we should talk. You got to go. You go by the actual text. Uh, and for us, as, as members of the Armenian church, the Armenian text that we have was translated directly from the original Greek, Septuagint, to Karapa. Uh, and then it was translated into the Vulgate, into the Ashkarapa. So we are fortunate. And scholars refer to the Armenian Bible translation as the queen of translations. The Greek, of course, is the, the king, the, 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 the authoritative, but the Armenian is the queen of translation. So we're fortunate. So <laughs> if you're able to read Armenian, be able to read the classical Armenian, you get the closest uh, there is to the original Greek. Okay? Anything else? Well, I just wanted to add... Um... He's, he is an evangelist from the United States. His name is Dr. David Jeremiah. Um, I think he's from Orange County in California, but um, he's an elderly evangelist, but um, uh, we love listening to him. Um, you know, I know Sidan and um, Lena do too. Um, anyway, he's just brought out a, um, a video, um, a docu video, he calls it, um, on the nativity. And in it, uh, it's interesting, the three wise men are astrologers and they come all the way from, there's one actually from Japan because he's from the East. So, <laughs> but from they Japan. meet up. That's the first time They're I ever Japan. heard of Japan. Yeah, yeah. Well, well the, see, he doesn't quite say that he's from Japan, but for the, the scenery from where he's uh, traveling from is obviously Japan. And um, anyway, but it was very interesting and uh, it goes, it shows the killings and um, uh, the wise men arrive when Jesus is around two, two years of age and yeah. he comes out of a house. He tries to st stick true to the text, but obviously there's a bit of um, imagery in there as well. So, yeah, yeah. But it is worth watching if anyone's interested. See, it... it, it... I, I, my criticism is of, of these type of individuals, you may have 90% of what is being shown that comes to us from, you know, scholarly work from scripture and whatnot. And then they insert that 10% that kind of, you know, the guy that came from, one of them came from Japan. Why are you even doing something like that? Um, it, it, it just messes things up a little bit, in my opinion, in my opinion. Um, I mean, there are a lot of nice stories. Uh, I was watching uh, an advertisement they were showing on TV for the video, The Chosen. Uh, I guess it's, I don't know if it's on, uh, it's on one of the cable stations, I guess, or whatnot. And uh, it, it was showing a dialogue between Jesus and the, and the Pharisees. And the Pharisees were talking, we obey the law of Moses. And, and Jesus is saying, I am the law of Moses. I don't remember reading anywhere in scripture where it says, I am the law of Moses. Uh, 
it sounds nice. It makes for nice drama, but not really giving you the, the absolute truth. You know, one thing that Jesus always says, I am the truth. Jishmari, Jishmari, Kasem says, in truth, I say to you, we read the gospel passages and, you know, this is how we, we start them. You know, if it's not the absolute total 100% truth, then it's a lie. And we don't want the lies. We want, we want the absolute truth. That's what our faith has to be based upon. Truth. Not lies, not things made up, not things that make you feel good. Um, you know, like I said. The, that's yours. Yes. There's, some, there's another point as well. All commentaries, even in our own church, when a preacher or a scholar is speaking, they're giving you their thoughts. They are, they are interpreting some of, you know, the, the writings, the, the scriptures, you know, and putting their twist on it, really. Sometimes That's human do. nature. That's what's happening. But, but, the, but, the, but the person who is preaching is not to put his interpretation on it, okay, but to present to you the scholastic interpretation of what it is. He can say, in my opinion... I think it's like this. Well, that's different than saying this is the way it is. Because if I say this is the way it is, there were four wise men that came to visit Jesus. Okay, so now you go and say, well, the priest said there were four wise men that came. Um, of course, it's not based on anything other than what I think. And that's like I said, what Father Tarazi, my Old Testament professor, said, I don't care what you think, you are stupid people. It, 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 I can say to you that this is what the church teaches based on truth. I can say this is what the church father teaches based on truth. I can say to you, this is what I preach and what I believe based on truth the church fathers on scripture, on scholastic interpretation, and so on and so forth. Much of what scripture that we have, yes, it is interpreted in, in, for us, for us to understand. But who's doing the interpretation? Do I trust St. John Chrysostom, St. Basil, St. You know, Gregory of Nautic? Although I trust some guy that says, you know, I went and I studied and I had a vision and God spoke to me. And the, 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 who am I going to trust? I'm going to trust the church fathers. Um, Dev yours. Yes. Do you also do you also think that it's part of God's plan to make it such a challenge, to make it so complicated, so that people, because there are all these interpretations, that's why there's so much <laughs> doubt and disbelief or you know, people of faith who lose their way because it's open to interpretation, really, because God has it made. It's there's a lot of gray. Well, Lena, God came to the world of mostly uneducated people, and these uneducated people, in some part, got the message. How do they get it? Because Jesus spoke to them in plain language. Now, how did he create, you know, the, the blind man seeing? That's different. That's, that's something that we have to try to, you know, come to understand. But that's the, uh, the glory of God. But did he cure the person of blindness? Yes. How? Well, he did this. He, this is how he did it. Um, do we understand that? Yes. Do we understand how he did it? Eh. But what is the power of God? Who is it that can forgive sin? That's what one of the, the Pharisees that, you know, that they, they accuse him of blasphemy. Only God can forgive sin. He said to the para, uh, paralegic, get up, your sins are forgiven. And the paralegic got up and walked. How did that happen? He is God. What does that mean? I can't explain it. That's the part that's unexplainable. But what God did, what he preached, is very simple. He said, love one another as I have loved you. 
I am the truth. I am the resurrection. Come to me. You'll live throughout all eternity. That's, you know, you can take that at face value. Or you can take it and say, well, what does that mean? What does eternal life mean? I don't know. I can't explain it. I can understand it according to what I have as far as knowledge and understanding. Eternal life means forever. What is forever? Aswanski there. You know, the, the, the ancient Greeks asked, what is truth? What is love? So, you know, go back 5,000 years. Then we would try to answer this question. Jesus says, I am love. I am the truth. So if we come to understand Christ more and more, then we come to understand love and truth and, and, and all the eternal life more and more. Totally? Nah. Because if we understand totally, then we are God. Can I just say something, uh, Father sure. Tatios? I don't know, but I do. Whenever I'm reading the Bible, before I read, I ask for the Holy Spirit. So I actually walk with the Holy Spirit, whether to interpret or to get an in, in um, to understand anything. Even when I'm speaking to people, I ask for the Holy Spirit to guide me in my conversation with people. So I'm asking virtually because I can't see God, but it's by faith and it's by the power of the Spirit. Because as I think, as you remember, Jesus said, I'll be going to the Father, but I will send you the Spirit who will can take control of you, who will lead you in your, all your difficulties. And that's where, even with the Bible, like I've got the NIV Bible in front of me, and even when I'm reading that, it, it, it's not as close as the King, Ver, King James Version, but I even ask God, because it's so simple, and I, spot, so I understand the way it's written. So even whatever I read, I say, Jesus, you help me to interpret, to understand what I'm reading. Because virtually, without him, or without the Holy Spirit, I would have no understanding of what the Bible is all about. Neither do I. Neither would I. Yeah. It's only anyway. through the Spirit. Yeah. So I just wanted to add that on. Yeah. The, the, the evangelist that wrote it, they didn't sit there and listen to, you know, a voice from above saying, okay, Matthew, write what I tell you. And, you know, Matt, they were inspired by the Holy Spirit. Hmm. The church fathers, yes. they were inspired by the Holy Spirit when, when they gave their understanding, when they gave their explanations. I've explained mm -hmm. to you, you know, a number of times that I've been in situations where I had to uh, comfort people that were in their final stages of life. And I know that what I was saying to them, it didn't come from this brain. It was coming from God. God used me as his vessel. Um. <laughs> I'm not that good. None of us are. And, and it's the Holy Spirit that that uses us to bring his presence into the world. Uh, even when it comes to the explanation of scripture. Uh, you know, I mean, you study, you you look into things, you, you try to get an understanding, and you try to make it so that others understand. But when Jesus Christ preached, he preached in, in simple language for people to understand. If he says, I am the resurrection, you want to see the Father, God the Father, you come to me. Come to me, follow me. You'll suffer. Pick up your cross. What does that mean? That means that you're going to suffer. What's the cross for? Death. They hung, they, they, they hung people on the cross uh, as a means of execution. So if you want to follow me, it's not going to be easy. Pick up your cross, follow me, um, and, you know, if you follow me and you stay and believe in me and so forth, you shall have eternal life. What does that mean? I don't know. You know, it, it, it behooves us, you know, like anything else. You want to be good at something, you have to work. Bottom line, you got to sweat. I don't care what it is. I mean, we want to be a Christian, you got to sweat. You have to study. <laughs> you want to be a good at you want to play baseball okay let's look at that if you want to play baseball it's not just swinging a bat it's not just catching a ball you have to exercise you have to to probably run you have to do push-ups you have to do pull-ups you have to get your muscles in good shape you have to coordinate your eye with what's going on you get, there's a whole bunch of things simply to play baseball 
okay? A football, any sport, I don't care what it is. Uh, you want to become one who understands what scripture is saying? You got to sweat. How do you sweat in that case? You read, you study, you listen, uh, you pray. Uh, all these things combined. You put all the ingredients into the bowl and you mix it all up and you cook it and you become, or in the stage of becoming. Um, it's all part of it. It's all part of it. No one person has the answer except Christ. No one person has the answer except Christ. Okay. And, and, and in reading and giving you this test, you know, it's all because it's a fun test to take, but you know, there, there's that understanding of, Hey, no, there, there aren't three wise men. It doesn't say. That's why it's important to remember Father Tarazi. I don't care what you think, what is in the text. <laughs> That's what's important. That's yeah. what's important. And so when you read scripture and you don't understand it, and there's much of scripture I don't understand, and even if I do, I'll go and I'll go to a commentary. I have two of them right here St. Jerome, Jerome's commentary. Uh, New Interpreter's Commentary. I have the Dictionary of the Bible um, that are here. I have the Kirapad. I have the Ashkarapad in Armenian. Um, I don't know Greek. I never studied Greek, so I don't have that. But I have, you know, different interpretations of scripture. I have it on my computer. I can get the King James International Revised Standard, um, you know, 15 different versions of the Bible. And there'll be one word that'll be different. And if I say one word to you, you may understand it in one context. If I use the other word that is used in scripture, you may understand it in a different context. <coughs> so you, you have to really, if you want to get it, well, all of what is there, study, study hard, go to the source. And you'll understand. Urish. Urish, anything else? Okay. Thank you for tonight. Thank you for all of it. Um, celebrate December 25th. I say as Armenians, we're fortunate people because we get all the hoopla out of the way for December 25th and New Year's Eve and New Year's Day and whatnot. Then we kind of settle down and we come to church and we celebrate the 5th and the 6th as we should celebrate Christmas. So have a good time this weekend. God be Thank with you. you. God bless all your families. I hope Santa, I Claus, is, hope Santa Claus is good to <laughs> all of you. I hope he's good to me. <laughs> hey, don't forget to tell your sister, all right? I hope Santa Claus is good to me. Tell your sister. Okay, <laughs> we'll tell him. We'll tell her. Right. Oh, oh, oh. And, he's uh, the one that says, I don't want anything. <laughs> yeah, I don't want anything. As my daughter, <laughs> which was a little girl one time, wrote, what do you want for Christmas? She put in very clearly cash, preferably 10 to 20, <laughs> like seven or eight years old at the time. Uh, oh, yeah. well, anyway, uh, God bless you all. Thank you all very much. Okay, thank you, Dad. Thank, thank, thank you, Dad. Merry Christmas, Christmas to everyone and to you. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry bye bye, Christmas. everyone. Merry Christmas. Bye -bye. Thank you. God bless. Thank bye -bye. you very much. Bye. Thank you, Michael.